ready to go then for round two of the Manufacturers Cup for the Gran Turismo World Series as Igor Fraga leads the field up the rise through Eau Rouge and Radion for the first time in that Toyota Supra then. So it's down the Camel Straight we go. This is where the slipstream is going to be, of course, crucially important. The field relatively spread out, though, due to that rolling start. So I wonder how effective it's going to be in the first portion of this lap. It's quite effective for Baptiste Beauvoir. He's already managed to get one over on Killian Drummond on the rise up into Le Coombe. So it's Beauvoir up into fourth. And you can see Tapai pulling out of the slipstream here of Suzuki. Side by side they come on the brakes. Tapai's on the inside. He's got track position. Suzuki tries to hold it firm into the left-hander. Bit of contact between the two. That pushes Tapai out wide. He's going to push him onto the kerb. Is he going to be compromised into the right-hander and have to relinquish that position? Well, they still run side by side on the run downhill in towards Rivage. And the thing is, it's opened the door here for Nicky Romero and Angel Inestrosa as well. So it is still Suzuki in front. But look at Nicky Romero now leaning on Inestrosa. They're going to flick it left, though. Inestrosa will have track position and does manage to hold firm in that Porsche for now. We'll get back to that discussion in a minute because interesting, I just thought Beauvoir lifted a little bit there on the way uh, up to, towards Eruge and Radio. I think just to get a better run now over the top, and he has done now, he's got a run on Cassis, so they'll go to the inside with the AMD. Now it should be just a simple factor of driving past with straight line speed, that BMW is not making it easy. Just about by now, there you go, nice and Baptiste Beauvoir up into third place in that AMG. Igor Fraga, of course, on a different strategy compared to the rest of the field. Started on the soft tyres, now on the mediums for the end of the race as Drummond emerges from the pit lane. Of course, Fraga now managing to make forward progress in this one as uh, everybody else makes the pit stop around him. So everybody else who has pitted uh, that is now on the soft compound of tyre Quite a sizable gap there, 7.1 seconds. So that's working out quite nicely for Fraga. He's just able to continue running his own race in clear air. And let's see if this is going to be a uh, strategy that works out quite nicely for him once the remaining six drivers come into the pits. So into the pits comes Baptiste Beauvoir for Mercedes AMG. Off the medium tyres, onto the soft tyres. Just a reminder, no fuel, of course, for these drivers in this race either. The person to watch now is Kylian Drummond. Has he able to, been able to jump Baptiste Beauvoir and the like in the pit stop? So let's see. Uh, drivers going by now. That was Igor Fraga on the way by up towards uh, Radion to retake the lead, as we uh, thought he would do. Let's see where Beauvoir and Cassis is, and more importantly, where the rest of the field is. So they're coming up the pit lane now as we watch Igor Fraga, which is very helpful for us at the moment. Uh, oh, penalty for Beauvoir here. That might oh. uh, compound his woes. Three because, seconds. So what has happened here? So he hasn't managed to emerge in, uh, he hasn't managed to emerge in front of killing Drummond. So it's not worked out for Drummond, but it's going to be academic really here because a three-second penalty will drop him not only behind Drummond, but possibly into the clutches of Suzuki and Cassie here too. Let's see how this is going to affect things here for Killian Drummond. Meanwhile, look at this with Suzuki now with Cassis. So all the drivers have made their pit stops. So these are battles for position. No other strategy to come into play until the conclusion of this race. Big old wiggle coming through the chicane there for Beauvoir as well. So I think there's just that frustration coming into play here as he now enters the penalty zone. So three seconds there for Beauvoir. It's not only the three seconds for the penalty. It's the time you lose after that as well. Don't forget, so he pulls sensibly there off of the racing line, moves out of the way of Cassis moves out of the way of Suzuki, etc., and rejoins in seventh place. That three seconds would have felt like a fortnight. Meanwhile, Suzuki's coming under pressure here from Cassis as they come up the Camel Straight and in towards Le Coombe. It's going to be a nice, easy taking here. And Tapai says, I'll have that as well. So two for the price of one. It's, it's tricky around here at Spa. You can see now Tapai just about squeezing through on Suzuki, but that VW also seemingly struggling for that uh, that top speed on the straight and just not able to keep the blaze on off into the runoff there that wouldn't have done him any favors speaking of oh no suzuki uh, up the hill here and he's going to be just a sitting duck on this straight all he can do i mean he's done the best he can to try and make a gap but it's not going to work romero there in the genesis has the toe Oh, I nearly actually uh, swiped him on the way through there, but uh, popped out at the last minute just to get the maximum possible slipstream on the way up to uh, Lake, uh, Lake Coleman. He's made that work and up into sixth place. And here we can see Beauvoir diving to the inside of Suzuki and getting all at sea there as Romero and Beauvoir on the outside then here. So we're three wide on the exit, Romero in the middle, Beauvoir on the outside as well as Suzuki now in front. And here comes the... Chilean driver of Inestrosa as well coming towards the outside. They're all getting really close for company here. Romero versus Inestrosa on the side by side as they come on the run down towards Eau Rouge and Radion. Inestrosa managing to get the better of Romero for the time being. The big loser in all of that was Beauvoir. Big sense coming here though because Suzuki, we know he's slow in the straight line in that VW. Here comes Inestrosa in the Porsche. He's going to actually push. 
first Suzuki down the straight, try and get a bump draft. So they're all fine position, three wide now to come up towards uh, the Lacom corner. And Romero's taking both of them, two for one. Cheers, mate, he says. Up into sixth place goes Romero in a stroke. He's going to try and get a long way around, take a place from Suzuki. He does do that. And now both Wah is there as well. So Suzuki, just like that, down to eighth place. And he might even go down the ninth. It's not under, over yet either because it's under investigation from the stewards here as well. Suzuki's had a little bit wide there into Rivage. Beauvoir's getting his elbows out. I think there might have been a smattering of contact between those two drivers as they come through the left hand of Vix and on the run down towards Puon. So you sense a bit of desperation creeping in here for Baptiste Beauvoir. He'd have to be a very brave man to send it down the inside into Puon there and thankfully he thinks better of it. But it's not been a race to remember for Baptiste in this one. The gap at the front has come down to about three and a half seconds, so I think if Fraga continues on, he'll have enough in his back pocket for the time being. But uh, there you can see Beauvoir piling the pressure onto Suzuki. It's got to be the bus stop, hasn't it? He's going to think about making this move. Absolutely, Igor Fraga, what a brilliant race it has been for him as he uh, comes out of the bus stop chicane across the timing line to take the chequered flag. It is the win in the Manufacturers' Cup for World Series 2.